Welcome to The Untold with Rex Hardy Jr. This is my brother. Like, this is the guy. Um, most of you know him, if not all of you. Teddy Campbell. So. Yeah. That's <laughs> who I am. In the shy for a little bit, so I'm excited about this. <laughs> Listen, bro. I'm so hyped. You know, <laughs> you know what it is when it comes to us. Like, bro, you like... You know me. Yep. I'm gonna give you your flowers here. Every I give them to you when every time yeah. we talk anyway, but bro, like you really set the standard on a lot of levels. Like just being who you are, moving how you move, and not just music, like through life, just things that happen. You the type of guy to be like, all right, no, let's tighten this up or let's figure this out. But as a musician who some people look up to, yeah. I wanna tell you, bro, I appreciate you. Thank you, for man. real, you've I, done that for a lot, and I appreciate it too, man. Because, you know, man, you know, it's it if it, it feels good to get the flowers. You know what I mean? It's like it's um, it does something. It's 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 encouraging, right? You know, and sometimes you feel discouraged because you don't feel like people see you or they recognize you or even they value you. And we go through that in our humanity, and as a drummer, as a musician, someone who has paved the way in in a way you know um you want people to notice you know? <laughs> you know what i mean like just, i'm just being honest yeah, man, no, like, you know sure. what I mean? and so i don't look forward and like man why they not noticing me but when they do when you do and people do it's like oh man that means so much to me you know what i mean so I want to tell you I'm grateful that you do that, that you actually see the value in encouraging me yeah. and doing that because a lot of times people don't people don't see the value in it. They don't understand the value in, 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 in encouraging or, or, or honoring. There's a, there's a, we were talking about it earlier. Mm -hmm. There's a level of honor that our generation does not have. They don't know. I'll just say our culture, our country, yeah, <laughs> you know, definitely. and that honor it, it goes a long way, man, you know, and so I appreciate you for actually doing that. It makes me feel good about me. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, for sure, bro. And this, and I will say this, let me stop and say this. This particular show is going to be dedicated, of course, thought about it, to Aaron Spears. Should have wore my sweater. Yeah, you I actually me? thought you were. Yeah. If I'm honest, <laughs> I thought you were. But this Aaron is. <sighs> That's a whole nother segment, but yeah. rest in peace, Aaron. Like, we love you, man. Your family, everything. Oh, like, you changed a lot for a lot of us, bro. Yeah. Um. I mean, <laughs> he <laughs> he changed drumming as we know it. I still do things on the drums that I got from Aaron. It's a part of my everyday play. Your, like, ar your arsenal. On the drums, I'm doing that because of Aaron. <laughs> Dog, I, quick story. I lied to you not. So... When Usher was having auditions, I remember, I think I may have found out from Kern or somebody. Because yeah. me and Kern, was that was my man. Yeah. And uh, then I hit you. I was like, yo, I'm going to do an uh, audition tape. <laughs> he was like, no. Nah. He was like, man, that'll be a great experience. He was like, but Aaron's doing it too. I immediately became discouraged. <laughs> and not in the fact that, because I knew it. It was just like, oh. he was coming from, it was like, I wasn't even... It wasn't even about playing. It was his presence. Yeah. It was his playing, but you get it. It's like when he walked it him. up, it was like, wow, that's Aaron. <laughs> it was him. <laughs> he was like, but I think you should still send in a tape. Yeah, it'd you be just great. <laughs> it'd be great, but just, just a sidebar, side note. Yeah, just be ready for whatever else yeah. may be coming. <laughs> Put this in your mental Rolodex. <laughs> no, yeah, so I had to say that. Like, we love Aaron, man. But listen, bro, like, where did your story start? Like, I think I really want to know from you transitioning from Chicago to L.A., 
what was going on in Chicago or who was you looking at where you really was like, okay, I've maxed out here. Or did you even feel like that did before feel, you, did you feel you maxed out here before you moved to LA or was just something you felt like I can't go any further unless I leave? Yes. The latter. Oh, gotcha. I you. felt like I couldn't go any further unless I left. Okay. Unless I left. Um, because, and to me, I didn't have this particular idea, this one dream or vision or purpose or plan. Um, you know, a lot of people will be like, man, I want to, one day I want to play with Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. I want to play with Beyonce or whatever. They got names of artists. They got, you know, I just knew if I moved to LA, I was going to make it because LA was where you go to make it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Definitely. Like, you know what I mean? It's like that childhood kind of dream. Like, I want to go to the big city. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like that was what it was for me. Like, if I move to LA, I'm going to be good. Like, I didn't know Ricky Minor. I didn't know nobody. I didn't know no drummers. I didn't know. I didn't oh, even wow. know that all of the drummers that I looked up to, you know, like, like you know, the Dave Weckles and the Vinny yeah. Valley, the Will Kenny, whatever. I didn't even know that these guys lived in LA. I just wow. knew that LA, I don't even know why LA was planted in my heart. I don't remember where that came from. What year did you actually move? <clears throat> I think it was like uh, 90, maybe like 97. Oh, okay. Maybe okay. something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like officially like gone, I'm out. You know, I think it was around 97. Yeah, that was that was around the time I told you me and Freddie linked. Yeah. I met Freddie in 95, I think. Yeah. But he came back around and played with Youth Edition. Mm-hmm. And by this time, I grew some. I think I was only, what, 16, 17 by the time? Yeah. By that uh, year. And that's when I told you, he was like, yo, man, you remind me of my brother, Teddy. And I was like, well, you can't be talking about the Teddy that I think you're talking about. <laughs> so are we talking about Pendergrass? <laughs> like, I don't know, you but. Teddy Riley, you being prophetic. Dog, because <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, yo. And like I said, this was early on, but it was like the LSG thing. I was just seeing you do certain things, and I was just like. I don't see myself doing that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not like I told you before, not that I didn't want to do it. It yeah. was just like, it was just big one. I'm in Chicago. He's mm -hmm. gone. So I kind of met you on your, when you had left mm -hmm. and we officially met at showers of blessing on 63rd. And I just thought about this 63rd. It was like off Ashland. Yep. It's a musical. Corey Raymond walked me up to you. You remember Corey? Yeah. Play? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Corey. I seen Corey when I was in Atlanta. Oh, yeah, yeah. He walked me up to you. He was like, yo, Ted, this is another one. Like, he's coming. He was like, all right, nice to meet you. I think you had said you had heard about me here and there, yeah. but that was where we officially met. And what, who was I playing for? That was like a Gerald Gray and Percy Gray thing. It was like a whole praise to oh, I got you. New Direction. So it was a gang, like Quinn played. Yeah. It was a lot of y'all. Okay. And then I actually came to see you play you was on 84th in Maryland. What was I playing for then? New Direction. Okay. Yeah, that's the day Freddie went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> he went to jail. Oh, that's why they came in the church and got him. Oh, absolutely they did. It was that church. And I remember that because Calvin told me to meet him there. But by this time, Calvin, he had made a name for yeah. it. Like he, so we walked in the church, like to the door to come in the church. Percy, great spotted Calvin. He was like, is that Calvin Rogers right there? <laughs> He's like, come down. Mind you, it was both of us. <laughs> you was with him. so you. I stayed at the door. You, he walked and sat you, in the you front. You didn't take the red carpet? Nah. Well, one, nobody knew carpet. me. <laughs> so I would have walked down. It would have been like, no, nah, Calvin, call, we said I, you. I called for Calvin. Yeah, but, <laughs> dog, even looking at you that day, man, like y'all had on the whole Carl Kanai <laughs> shirt. <laughs> and I just, but it's like, dog, you always had this thing man you was always ahead like where did that thought process come from like you never did the double bass pedal thing you did they was like this dude did things that we were just like i wouldn't have tried that well what was interesting was i was out on uh, i was on tour with uh, some gospel music i was out with got some gospel music plays so I was out with a guy named Mike Matthews. Mike Matthews was like the Tyler Perry before Tyler Perry. Yeah. <laughs> so I was doing these plays, and before I went and did those plays, Oscar Seaton saw me play and was like, yo, 
I like your plan, but I'm going to work with you some more. There's some other stuff you need. Mm -hmm. So he would take me to his basement and whoop up on me. So he, he taught me how to play in different time signatures. He taught me jazz. We played double bass pedal stuff. You know, he taught me how to, you know, my phrasing and and playing across the bar line, all these different mm -hmm. things that I never had a concept. I never it was. I never knew it was a concept. Yeah. Never knew it was a thing. And he 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 gave me a lot of um, understanding to what I was playing, gotcha. and, and also introduced me to new things. And so from that, then I went on the tour with the plays and stuff. And so during those plays. We were we were playing a lot of different stuff. We were we were able to play whatever we wanted to play, like mm -hmm. as underscore music, right? Yeah. So like, we were playing music to to score the scene. Yeah, we'd be playing Yellow Jackets. We'd be playing all kinds of stuff, yeah. you know. And so I was really free to play what I wanted to play out there on the plays. I was creating. Gotcha. I was always creating, always creating moments, you know. Like I had to, you know, create a a a, a, a tense moment or a happy moment or you know, or, or some kind of sound effect or something. So I was mm -hmm. always creating. So I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't think like a normal drummer. Yeah. Because I was, I was, I had to be a producer. I was scoring. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. So like there was a level of just, just creativity. I was, I, I just naturally walked in. Mm -hmm. Then, from there, I started getting introduced to other styles of music like Go Go. And oh, yeah. remember when I went to DC, we were on the road with the play, and I went to DC, man, and I was at, at a theater. Was like, I think it was a Warner's, the Warner Theater. And I walked outside. And I remember next door was Ben's Chili Bowl, but across the street, there was this sound coming from this club. And I remember this was right around the time Brandy's I Wanna Be Down came out. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wanna be down. And yeah. I'm listening to that. But I heard a, I heard all this stuff and whatever the harmonies was and everything and they were singing, I want to be down. I was like, what is that? Yeah. Like, what? What is that? Like, I've never heard that before. Yeah. And man, from that day, I was, I became a, a resident DC oh, drummer. Yeah. I was like, everything was go-go. Everything oh, was. Yeah. So I brought all of these different styles to my plan and whenever I came back home, whenever I came to Chicago, I was unleashing all of it on y'all. I was like, I was just like, <laughs> I was like, all right, we got a new direction like, gig to do. We got, right. We got a Chicago uh, Bass record to do. Oh yeah. I was playing stuff. I was pulling stuff out of midair. Like, I'm gonna play that. Like, that whole double bass pedal thing with Take Over Lord. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of like a rock thing, a blues rock thing. Um, it's fast, double pedal. <laughs> you know, I'm like, <laughs> wait, had you used the double pedal like that before? Oh yeah, I was using it all the time. Oh god, okay. We just didn't know. I was using it all the time. I was using it on the play. Oh, okay. So like in the you, plays, we had moments where we get to stretch. Like we play, you know, instrumentals from <laughs> one from the last <laughs> scene into uh, intermission. Got so you. after that last scene, the song, we we get to vamp for a little while in the intermission. So solos and all kind of stuff. And then at the end of the show, you know, the the bows, everybody's yeah. being introduced and all that kind of stuff. They introduce the band solo. So we plan while people are walking out of the theater. So man, I get to I was I was losing my mind. <laughs> yeah. I was able to play all my stuff, double pedal, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So I was I was in that mode. So when I came back off that tour to come do a Chicago Mass record, I was a rock drummer by then. Well, yeah. as, as it pertains to double pedal. No, absolutely. <laughs> so I was like, this was easy for me to play in that. I was like, this is <laughs> and I wasn't thinking that I'm about to do something new. I was just I'm about to do what I've been doing. Yeah, and it turned into this. First time you ever hear somebody play double bass, but double bass pedal. On it was a definitely record. the first time because they said, "Well, people were saying you didn't do it in rehearsal." I mean, I don't know. I wasn't around. I probably, I'm sure I didn't. Yeah, they was like, "No, he just pulled out," and people was looking like, "Is he serious?" Like, because <laughs> certain things you and I learned this being around Calvin, like when he was doing sessions, and yeah. I was actually doing a drum programming. Yeah. 
more than likely what Calvin does in rehearsal is what he does on the session. Oh, bro. Like now he'll, you know, he'll yeah. do some stuff like when we got to like tell the devil I'm back and all that. Yeah. I was sitting there like. You didn't do nothing. You didn't do any of this <laughs> this week. Yeah, yeah. But so I understood it, but it was just like for them to say, it's like I'd almost be too nervous. Yeah. To, but I guess like you said, in your mind, that's what you was doing already. I was my, yeah, I was always creating. Yeah. So whenever I played and I got into that space where I probably shouldn't be creating as much. Yeah. That was that was me. So I never there was never a time where I was like, you need to not create, not be Teddy. I found a way to be Teddy in the confines of the, you know, confines of the song. Yeah, I got you. So I never lost that edge and that that spontaneity or creativity. I never lost that. I just I was able to learn how to control it. Got you. You know, br- reel it in. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Harnessed it. But I was I was always going to be creating. And if I was rehearsing something and I played, you know, cert- a certain thing a certain way in rehearsal or whatever, you know, that was to kind of get the the gist of the song, the base mm-hmm. of the song, the feel of the song. But I never locked myself into that's what I'm going to play tomorrow on the show. Got you. <clears throat> I'm, I'm a, I'm, I, I knew that now I have the foundation. I know the song. I know what to do. I trust my instinct. I ain't going to go too crazy. But I trusted myself, too. Mm-hmm. So whenever I got on the gig, whatever, I was still free to create or whatever, but still be respectful to the song. But yeah, man, I was my my that that time during the plays was the, probably the most pivotal time of me becoming this Teddy. Oh God, that makes sense. I think no, nah, it makes total yeah. sense because it was just, it was really like, bro, like some of the stuff you was doing, some of it wasn't simple. That's just let's just put that out there. It's not like because some people hear us play something to be like, oh, I think I could do that. Yeah, yeah. But Look there's easy. a lot of stuff you was doing. It was like, no, I'm not touching that. But it still sounded like you. Mm-hmm. So it didn't matter if you went and got go-go or whatever. Like you came, it's like you was comfortable enough to play something that you got from somebody else or heard. Yeah. But you turned it into what yeah. you do. <clears throat> you get what I'm saying? And yeah. that's, it's not the norm now. Well, I feel like it was a gift for sure because I wasn't thinking about that. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like I, I've, I've had people like so. Ronald Bruner told me one time. Of course, I got a lot of favorite drummers out there. He's one of them. But he told me one time. He said, "Man, you know, a lot of people aren't blessed to have a sound. You have your own sound. Like I know when it's you playing, and that's mm-hmm. a gift. Yeah, because a lot of people don't. Man, you hear <laughs> like especially now in this." day and age they these dudes all sound the same oh yeah they just really do <laughs> it's just recycled do, yeah. chops maybe you can play it faster mm-hmm. but there's no distinction there's yeah. like oh that's you know that's so-and-so that's so-and-so that left with i want to say you know i'm probably gonna get in trouble for this these guys are gonna be mad at me like <laughs> you know that, like, sidebar this whole podcast and interviews and <laughs> things that came out because i said drumming is not about you know, shedding and chops and whatever is whatever that thing I posted, man. Pe- people was coming out against me on that like crazy. Really? Yeah, it was. It was. I didn't even know. People were sending me, man. You know, this dude did a whole podcast about what you said. I was like, really? Oh. I so didn't. anyway, I'll probably get some 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 haters on this one, but I just for me, uh, and I follow a lot of people, and I'm fans. Like, even all y'all that got crazy chops that I feel like y'all don't sound original. I still am a fan because y'all, it's amazing. Oh, it's yeah, like, it's phenomenal, yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a fan, you know? Absolutely. But the reality is you don't sound original. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, um, so I feel like that, that, that sound, that, that um, reality or truth of, of someone having their own sound, I feel like that kind of left with your generation, you and Calvin, and mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Like I, I feel like that that like the younger generation that you know the generation under y'all, you know, starting to sound too much alike. Yeah, because even like you think about Ronald, all that stuff that Ronald play, don't mm-hmm. nobody sound like Ronald. Bro. <laughs> nobody sounds like Ronald. as much stuff yeah, as Ronald. that dude play. Yeah, he still sound like Ronald, and don't nobody sound like him. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like, agree. uh, uh, um. Uh, who else out there like that? Um, you could say, I mean, well, of course, Aaron Spears. Yeah, again, yeah, it's nobody like, sounds like that. And you could put up him the behind a wall, yeah, and be like, oh, that's Aaron up there. You, 
looked up to me. Calvin yeah. looked up to me. Quinn looked up. Y'all don't sound like me. Yeah. Rico. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, Rico, when he when I first heard him play, he he first introduced himself to me as a drummer. Like he was hanging out with me and I didn't know. Really? That he was as bad as he was. Oh yeah. So when I heard him play, he showed me a video. Dorian, the lead singer that was we were doing a tonight show. He, Dorian walked past the dressing room was asking me why am I listening to myself? Why are you in there listening to yourself? And it was Rico finally letting me hear him. No. And I, I swear, bro, he's the it only... sounds about right, though. He's the only one that I could say out of all y'all... Oh, yeah. ...that really sound like me. No, I 100% like, agree. Like, that really, truly sound like me. Bro, that's me. Yeah. But he don't sound like me on his gigs that he do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. crazy to me. Like so, yeah. it was like there was a there was a there was him channeling me for whatever reason he was doing, or you know maybe he didn't even know it. But when he out there doing them gigs and all the stuff that he's on, he don't sound like me. So he sound like himself. Yeah, he got his own sound. Mm-hmm. So there's not a lot of drummers like that right now. And so Ronald was really he really blessed me. He was like, man, you have your own sound. You have a sound. And I feel like that's what the drummers now need to get 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 back to is uh finding their own personality their own sound and within whatever it is they doing right now no i <laughs> i definitely agree with that bro <laughs> and like i said is some people take it as it's harder or it's hard to do that by being so many but it's like at the same time if you just play your part and play yourself because can't everybody knows how i feel about you calvin nissan Gerard Barnes, like Gerald Hayward. There were just certain guys I was like, okay, I'm going to take this from him. I'm going to take this and then build who I think I want to be on drums. So that, what was, what was, can you, because I can tell you what I think people need to do to develop that. But what did you do outside of what you just said you took from pieces of whatever and that, what else did you do? Like what else can you, if you can think about, what else did you do to uh, intentionally if you were intentional about developing your own sound, what else did you do? Well, one, because what I did was I looked at y'all and ev- all of y'all were in different situations. Right. So what Gerald was doing wasn't what you was doing, which made the plan completely different. Right. So what I had to do was personally, I had to take it literally back to the beginning. It was like, okay, how did you sound before you started looking up to these guys? Mm. That's literally what I did. And then it was like, okay, well, I had a little sound. So now add what they have taught you, whether it be uh, right up, you know, me watching you from a distance or you actually telling me, yo, I think you should try this. Take that and add it to what you know you're good at doing. Mm. And I was on I was under the umbrella of I wasn't trying to take nobody's spot. Mm hmm. Like, I, I look up to y'all too much. It's like, okay, well, that's his gig. If he need me to sub, cool. It ain't no me coming in trying to, oh, yeah, like, I'm here. Like, what do y'all need? Y'all don't need him anymore. No, I sub for you today. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But in that, I had to look at what you was doing and also try to figure out what you were looking for. Because mm-hmm. you, you had already crossed these thresholds. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was like, okay, well, what did he do to find his sound? Mm. again you was going to different states whether it was through the plays or whatever getting what they did and turn it into a teddy thing right so that's what it took me a while to do but i never stopped one admiring y'all that's the first thing but i never stopped asking mm. i never stopped asking. and that's a problem i mean some people get so locked into them thinking what they do is the best yeah they stop asking mm. You know what I'm saying? I, you never, you should never not be a student. I mean, <clears throat> I feel like that, you know, you, you made some very intentional moves to developing your sound. Yeah. Right? And I feel like a lot of the drummers now have to do the same. Yeah. They have to have some very intentional things that they do. Mm-hmm. Right? And um, those things, to me would be stuff like, you know, pull away from social media, pull away from your favorite drummer, pull away from all of that stuff that you use and to to glean from, grow from, be inspired by, and just 
come to a, you know your practice time or whatever with just your own thoughts and your own creativity, not influenced by someone else. Yeah, like 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 pull like intentionally intentionally pull away from that and put yourself in situations where you can create. Like because I was put in a situation with the plays where I had to create, that helped me. But what is what is what what can you intentionally do to put yourself in those kind of situations where you have to create from like a spot a spontaneous place, mm-hmm. you know, like so if that's your practice time, you know, what I mean, whatever it is, I don't know if you whatever it is you're creating and plan or doing in that practice time where you're able to be spontaneous, you know, based on what's in your own head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And then and, and, and like, like really intentionally spend some time daily or whatever that looks like for you doing that. Because yeah. I feel like a lot of times because we have so much information coming in at us, it's hard to, we're, we're addicted by information. Mm, yeah. We're, we're addicted to, I'm sorry, information. So like I keep learning, keep growing, I keep watching mm-hmm. this video, keep watching this video, keep watching the video, keep watching. So you're watching all of these drummers, you're watching this, you're watching this. You don't understand now because you watch it so much, you're addicted to all of this information yeah. that you're becoming a clone now. You yeah. don't realize that <laughs> right. you, like, you really are becoming no, a absolutely. robot. absolutely. Right? They're programming, that's the programming, and the programming is programming you. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to figure out some kind of way to get away from the programming. Yeah. You know, which I feel like you did with intentional things like, what did you sound like before? You You know what I mean? Like those kind of things. Yeah. Those reflective things that can put you in a place of saying, wow, okay, well, I did have a sound before I met Nissan, before I met Teddy, before I met Calvin. You know what I mean? And now you, okay, well, now... Okay, those guys did influence me a lot. Well, how what can I take from them to add to this that I already have? Absolutely. Like that was very intentional. Yeah. You know, um, and I don't know if a lot of guys are actually doing that. And it like I say, but it's I mean, that's funny you say that because it took me being in situations around y'all and even from a distance to be like, okay, it's something they got that I don't have yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how can I find that? Yeah. Because like for instance, when Calvin would play with Ricky I would sit in with Ricky like if he couldn't the choir wasn't vibing the same yeah. I was like ugh like something <laughs> now I know I'm okay because yeah. he called me to fill in yeah. but it was just certain things I was like no. missing something. I was like you know what let me figure this out so what I started doing for years is literally practicing with a click track I wasn't doing no tricks nothing I was just playing feel that's I'm talking about hours, like three hours a day. I would literally just sit there, turn on the click track and just play it. And I'm like, if I can make what I'm playing sound like a song while not playing a song, then me playing with a band is nothing. That's interesting, man, because I did the same thing. I would play to a click track or I play with a drum loop. Yep. And that was it. <laughs> and you dog. It, because now you're listening to it. It's like, man, like, but you can tell honestly, you can tell. I can. You can tell certain guys who did that because they don't need a lot to sound good. They don't. You get what I'm saying? Like very confident in their their own sound. Oh, yeah. That didn't come with them practicing with no band Mm -mm. or playing with no... (laughs) Yep, because some guys don't know how to play with a band because they practice by themselves so much. But if you practice the right thing by yourself, Mm. you know what I'm saying? Like you, you can be Kobe or whoever. If you practice in buzzer beaters all day, yeah. there's another however many minutes left in the game. Like you're not, you're not effective at all. Yeah, you so we can't <laughs> put you in until the fourth quarter. Because that's all you're working. All you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, I'm like, how are these dudes making these people like y'all used to make people move with and you wasn't even doing it's like it was just if you would do a splash, it was like, okay. I like, remember to your point, I just recently watched this uh, video on YouTube when I was playing with George Benson and it was somewhere in Europe, somewhere overseas and Randy Wallman, one the guy who was playing keyboards, he taped me, filmed me, he actually put it on his YouTube page years ago when he filmed it. But I went back to it and it was a solo that I got every night on, on uh, Broadway. Mm, mm, oh yeah. Yeah. Mm, mm, <laughs> and I remember some drummers I heard would take that solo and break it all the way down, deconstruct it. Do, 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 do. It might really take a all whole the solo. <laughs> right. Well, man, I'm George just gets to ripping. <laughs> He's doing all this thing. 
he playing all in the grooves, killing, right? Then all of a sudden he gets to the drum, like, yo, you know, he, he yells out for the drum. Yeah. I just felt like it was my job to keep go keep that energy going. Keep the intensity there. They was dancing and he playing all of his greatest licks. Yeah. But it was still under the groove. <laughs> so like when it came to me, I was like, I need to figure out how to keep that moment that i don't want the moment to change mm -hmm. it's like you watching you know like it's it's like it's like well i'll go i'll go here it's like being at a party you dancing to have a good time and the dj stops the song <laughs> the record scratch right? right you right. hit the dj you know you hit the you table like, and there's a whole thing it's like you unplug the whole you know yeah. we dancing and you unplug the jukebox Definitely. you know what i mean that's what i felt like a a, a drum solo would have done in that moment mm -hmm. So I was just watching it, man. Not, and man, it, I ain't gonna lie. My drum solo blessed me. Because I was just I was just playing all of the stuff in the groove. Yeah. I kept the groove going and I played all my little cute stuff. Mm -hmm. But it was like, and I you could hear the people like, oh, uh, ah, yeah. you know, because but but they still felt good. They understood and it. And I'm like, man, like that's a you know, if we could, if we could honor that respect that respect the fact that people were dancing and having a good time and feeling good and you came and changed the whole feeling of it you just you didn't care nothing about how they felt you had to get you you you, <laughs> you had Basically. to get you your rock on <laughs> that's exactly yeah dog you read the room yeah had to and that's the thing Mo. but that's one thing i learned from like you got to internalize that stuff because you can you can be amazing at what you do, but if you don't read the room right there, George could have been like, you know what, he's great, but yeah. something you just gotta find another drummer. Yeah, it's just not. <laughs> and then, but again, like you said, you don't second guess yourself yeah. when it comes to, and that's one thing I really learned from you. Yeah, it's like amongst everything else, but it's like, yo, man, don't second you where you are for a reason. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. If it don't work, they gonna tell you it don't work. Yeah. But more than likely, because I would see you do stuff and be like, wow, I think only Teddy could get away with that. And you'd be like, yeah, maybe some stuff. Maybe some <laughs> stuff. So I understood it. Maybe some stuff because they trust me. Or yeah, like, absolutely. I built that rapport with them. But I think me watching that and knowing like, okay, well, if he can be himself, no matter what seat he's in, it turns into a Teddy seat. Yeah. And I don't mean playing for artists because one, you are artists. But I think when I say that, you do shows with... 20 30 different artists on it yeah so you're not just featured behind this one person you're not moving around now you did do tours and of course i went to all those too yeah. like you had me driving around <laughs> you know what i'm saying i drove to milwaukee to see you i actually saw you in nashville with frankie and really? oh yeah i was in nashville matter of fact i was subbing at tony dickerson's church mm. you remember is it tyrone dickerson? tyrone dickerson. tyrone dick and I, Quinn and Dion, had called me. Mm. So I was staying at Dion's place. He was out of town. And he was like, yo, I'm here with the uh, Budweiser tour. Mm. And okay, like, yeah, man. we kicked it. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Cause I remember some footage of anything that I've done with Frank. I was there for a couple of years, and I can't find not one. Really? Thing, not one thing. Well, I remember you opening the show with a drum solo. Yeah, I remember that, too. Because I remember I did that at the New Orleans uh, at the... Tubadon? Yeah, but it was uh it was during the uh, Essence Festival. And my first time playing with Frank on that stage, and I've done a few of them with Frank. First time playing with Frank on that stage, just at the Superdome, so I mean people that is. That place was packed out and here I come out there on the stage and <laughs> Alone. Open up the show with a drum solo and it's like sixty five, seventy thousand black people in the audience. I'm like looking like, Oh my god. <laughs> I get on the drums and I do my thing and all these people yelling and screaming. I'm, I'm never, that's yeah. never happened to me ever in life. I was, I was 22 years old or something. Wow. And I never experienced that. Yeah. And I was like, did my thing and they went crazy. Ah! And then as soon as I came out of that, zoosh, zoosh, oh yeah. And those things <laughs> are the whole crowd started so I was like I'm sitting there looking in the audience like yeah. it felt like 
It felt like I was in church and the first time I got the Holy Ghost. So yeah, <laughs> it was that, like the went, went through me. I was like, this is, this is, look at these people. You know what I mean? And so like that, I will never, ever forget that. That was one of the, that was one of the most powerful moments I've ever experienced in my life as a drummer. I can't explain it. It was crazy. That's a different type of. <laughs> you, you know what it's like to be in the room. Some people don't know. Some of y'all don't know what it's like, but. The older crowd would know <laughs> what it's like to be in a Frankie Beverly concert at the Essence Festival. Yeah. And in that room, it's like, it's otherworldly. Yeah. It's literally the biggest backyard party. Literally. Ever. I remember one, I remember again, we were doing um, Before I Let Go, and the whole is far as the eye could see, 65, 70,000 people were electric sliding. And yeah. it was like, I was looking at, the, I was like, this is crazy, man. Like, yeah. that was, that was crazy. I don't think that's ever been done by, well, I don't know, by any black artist to have the whole room yeah. collectively, like you said, it was like a, Family reunion, a back a backyard oh, yeah. cookout or something. Definitely. But it's seventy thousand, sixty thousand. How do you how do you do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that was a different type of uh But dog, even in that though, like did did the drum solo was that happening with the drummer before you? Yeah, that was a that was a maze. That was a thing. That was a Frankie Beverly man. Oh, thing. gotcha. Okay. It was a thing. That's dope. <laughs> and see, I never knew that. Yeah. I never that knew that. But it's like but sitting in that position, and I know even the conversations we had, how Frankie is about drums. It's like, and we just had a conversation like the drums being the center of most bands, if not all. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So it's like, I've seen some bands, unfortunately, and the drummer wasn't good, but the entire band was good. And I was just like, wow, y'all was cool. <laughs> no disrespect. <laughs> but you're thinking about it because the drummer holds everything. The drummer sucks, the band sucks. Period. And that's a true statement. Period. Because you, that's a that's a very true statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a true statement. Period. I mean, you may you may be able to get away with some of that feeling being some of the being salvaged <laughs> with a with great a, <laughs> with a great bass player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because of the rhythm aspect mm -hmm. of it. But yeah, you're still pretty bad if your drummer's bad. No, that's facts. <laughs> you know what? And I'll say this: going back to what you asked about earlier. Or when you said, like, what did I do to pull away? Like, just having this conversation. Because each one of you all had your own sound, mm. there weren't a lot of stunt doubles out there. Yeah, Like, the industry is completely full of stunt doubles now. Yeah, completely. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it was yeah. like... Wow, that's very interesting, Rick. It is. It's full. Like, if you can't put... If you can't line these dudes up behind the curtain, you could put you here... Me there, Aaron Spears there, Gerald there, Calvin there, and put a curtain. The minute we start playing, people are gonna be like, "Ah, oh, yeah, that's that's Teddy. Yeah, that's right, that, that's right, right. That doesn't exist anymore." Right. So, but I said all that to say that I'll let you take it. With that being the only existence I knew of, I didn't feel like I could make it sounding like a replica. You know what I'm saying? It was mm -hmm. like, well, if they want Teddy, they'll call Teddy. If they want, I was Calvin's filling. For everything gospel, you know what I'm saying? But if he was available, they were going to call him. Right. So for me, it was like, okay, these are all originals. I want to be another original. Well, Rex, man, you said, and this is an interesting, I'm glad you brought this up because moving forward, I'm, I'm being much more intentional. A friend of mine, he's a pastor, his name is Brett Jones, and he wrote this book. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's basically... Uh, the premise is, you know, finding the next, you know, not necessarily finding the next you, but who's going to succeed you. Oh, right? gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you think about the story of the Bible, you know, Elijah, Elisha, you know, mm -hmm. Elisha was going to get the, the double portion of Elijah's <laughs> anointing. You know, yeah. He was going to be the next. And um, I feel like there has to be, we have to be very intentional with bringing up the next great right great. and so with that i look at you and calvin 
and people like that for me as the Elishas. Right, you got a double portion of my anointing. Y'all got some stuff I don't have. I don't, y'all got, I got what I got, but y'all got, dude, it's like yeah. y'all got that. a couple other, you know, <laughs> couple other, <laughs> couple other <laughs> shots, couple other shots of anointing. Right. <laughs> he poured the oil, stayed poured on you a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, he needs this. Yeah. So, so, uh, but, but, but to be intentional, because I remember for a long time, bro, and it bothered me. And that's kind of why I reached out to Calvin. And then you and I would have Aaron and people like that fill in for me because Ricky would always ask me, he said, man, who's going to be the next you? Yeah. Who's out there? Who are you? Who are you mentoring? Who's going to be the next? And and unfortunately, I told him, I don't know because a lot of guys don't want to be the next. Mm -hmm. They don't want to come that route. Yeah. They want to be on the gig already. They want to have the, they want to be the ones that they can say, I did this for myself. They don't want to be humble and come through someone who's already doing it. Yeah. And so when he said that man account, he was like, yo, he said, man, you should have a line around the door. This is when we had the tonight show. He's like, you should have a line around the door with drummers just coming to see what you do. Facts. He was like, why? Cause he remembers when he used to do it, mm -hmm. when he used to go and, when he used to be, a, they, him and Nathan, he's probably around the same age, but Ricky was following Nathan around, carrying mm -hmm. his bass. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. showing up on gigs just to sit there in the audience to listen, to sit there in the rehearsal to read the chart, to read along while he, mm -hmm. somebody else is on the gig. This is yeah. Ricky Minor, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Definitely. so he was just like, who's, who, who's going to be that for you? And I'm like, nobody. I remember a, a friend of mine, I was telling him, man, you got to come hang out with me at the Tonight Show, man. Just come up here. He, I remember him telling me, and it's like it was yesterday. I remember him telling me, man, he said, man, I don't want to do that. He said, I don't want to come up to the gig. I want to be on the gig. And I was like, yo. But that's, you know. So there's people out there that are willing to 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 be mentored and all that kind of stuff. We just going to have to do it. Because there shouldn't be, for a long time, I felt like there was nobody I could call. And I remember telling you that Yeah. when you came on and I was like, man, I'm so glad that you are here because it was too much pressure on me. And I didn't like it. I didn't feel good about that pressure. Yeah. Like I wouldn't beat my chest like, yeah, I'm the man. Can't nobody feel my shoes. Yeah. Man, I'm tired. Man, you I couldn't wanna, breathe. Yeah. You I had can't no do downtime. Everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's stupid. Why can't I call you and you come do this? Yeah. Like, why? Why can't you do this? Yeah. You know, and so, I mean, it really bothered me, but I didn't know what to do. I was still young, trying to figure out my life. So I'm like, I don't know what, the, Rick, Ricky asking me these questions, I don't know what the answer is. But I know <laughs> now that I have to be intentional with mentoring. Yeah. And just saying, listen, I'm here to teach you. I'm here to show you. Either you want it or you don't. If you don't want it, this ain't for you. Mm -hmm. But I'm a teacher. Yeah. That's what it is. You know what I mean? That's where we are now. We have to accept that role because at the end of the day, if we ain't going to teach them, they ain't going to learn. Or if we don't teach them, somebody else going to teach them something that's going to be wrong. Very they wrong. being taught. Mm -hmm. They know. being taught something from somewhere. Yeah. And I listen, to you out there, listen, <laughs> <laughs> you have to be humble enough to appreciate the words that are coming to you. Like you really do. And you have to be humble enough and open enough to ask. I mm. still call these guys an ask. Like to I don't ask. have a problem with asking. Like, yes, I've done what I've done, but I wouldn't have done what I've done if it wasn't for me asking these guys. So I think mm. that's now you do have some younger guys for sure that they'll ask and they really want the information. Mm -hmm. But the majority of it isn't that. You get what I'm saying? And I think for me, mm. being in the space of being able to help the younger generation while being able to still pull on y'all like, yo, Teddy, like I need your help on this. That's where that bridge is. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because these guys are looking at me as an OG. I'm like, wait, okay, I get it. Right. But it ain't that. Yeah, there's an older G that you oh. need to be looking at. <laughs> what about them? Do you know them? You say an older G? Do you understand that there's an older G? But because some of, and I'm not talking about all of them, because some of them are so used to not giving credit where credit is due, there are no, you get what I'm saying? So for me, 
ain't no us without y'all. But I need them to understand what we got from y'all. Right. I didn't just hop up there and like, oh, well, Ricky, what's all we doing? Cool. No, man, no, it didn't work like that. I was on the phone with you like, Ted, listen. And a lot of times I watched you from afar. So certain questions I should have asked, I didn't need to. Yeah. Because I watched you. You know what I'm saying? Even yeah. shows where maybe we come in and do something with Mary and you was in the house band. I remember one time in particular, like for sure, we did uh, Home for the Holidays. Yeah. We came in with Mary. He was like, well, what you doing that? You was doing, of course, y'all was in the house band. He was like, what you doing? I was like, chilling. We kicked it all day. Mm -hmm. We ate. I, matter of fact, your family was gone. I ended up staying at the crib. Mm -hmm. We hung out and mm -hmm. we was going through music. You said, bro, you need to start listening to some more music. Mm. This was 2006, I think, or five. And I was like, man, you right. Yeah. You just gave me a folder. I'm talking about none of the songs that was in these folders I had listened to. Wow. None of them. Because in my mind, what I was put here to do, I was playing. Like, mm. I was playing for Mary while I was at church. I just She just wasn't in front of me. Right. <laughs> Mary's music, I was, R&B is in my blood. Right. You are, yeah. But you was like, okay, you got that. Now what else do you want to do? And I knew at that moment, you was almost like indirectly grooming me. I was. You know what I'm saying? It was almost like you was like, okay, I'm going to give you this and see what you do with it. Yeah. Dog, for months, that's the only music I listened to. Mm. Because I did, I mean, outside of learning her music, I didn't need to listen to R&B. It's like, <laughs> that's what well, I at do. The other, at the end of the day, too, man, when you hear that music, it's another part of you that's ignited. You're like, oh, oh my God. Wow. And then you hear stuff, you hear melodies, you hear hooks, you hear phrases, you hear words, you hear lyrics. You hear, it's like oh my, it's like a whole nother world is introduced to you. Yeah. You know, and I want to say to you, to your to your point, uh, I want to give you your flowers <laughs> because I've had a few fill ins, you know, not a lot, but a few, a nice amount. Mm -hmm. And all of them were amazing. We've named some of it's been great. But the band, the Ricky Minor band, the <laughs> nucleus of the band, yeah. the Wayne Lindsay, the Rick Kevin Ricard on percussion, the Paul Jackson Jr., the yeah. Dave DeLome, the you know, all of these guys, they all said the the best fill in that has ever came across the Ricky Minor band in my tenure <laughs> was Rex L. Hardy. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. Rex, Rex, Rex is the best. Rex is the best. Rex is the best. <laughs> because, man, and that's that's, the, that's a big compliment, I think. You know, and to some of you guys, it may not mean a lot, but because we played a lot of music, yeah. you know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff that people, the, the people that know me, the things that they respect about me is that I can come into situations and play these different styles of music and pretty much play it as authentic as I can, but to them and to a lot of people that even play that style, they're impressed. Like it's like, oh yeah, wow, you're playing, you're, you're playing a rock our music. Drummer. Yeah, <laughs> you know? You're playing you're our music. You're a jazz drummer. You, <laughs> right. you know. Yeah. And so, um, so with that being said, that's not really easy to do. Yeah. Right. It's just really not. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like it's almost unnatural. Yeah. To to, <laughs> to do right, you you have to. It it's it's um it, there's a lot that goes into it right there's 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 the, there's the humility I would say is the first thing that goes into it humility is number one because the humility says that I it's, it's not about me it's about something or someone else right so then there's the there's the there's the okay if it's not about me what is it about it's about the artist it's about the other guys in the band it's about the music specifically it's about the song specifically it's about the arrangement it's about all these other things more so than it's about me so humility puts you in that place so now you become a student of whatever it is it's like okay i gotta i care more about that than i do myself yeah that's number one then there's another level of practice and time and care that goes into you actually wanting to produce the best sound you want to be the best you're not just humble enough to say, okay, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to not make it about me, but then you got to go the next step and say, now I want to actually put my best foot forward. I want to be good at this. 
Absolutely. You know what I mean? So yeah. then you go and you practice and you share and you listen to these songs and you get the right sounds, the deep snare or the high snare or the big <laughs> cymbal or the little cymbal. Or you, you dress all of this up and you're very intentional about making that song the best you can make it. And, you know, of course, with some other things, but they feel like those two are the main things. Everybody doesn't do that. Most drummers nowadays don't do that. They're not even yeah. thinking that. They don't even. They don't care that much. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? Like they really don't care that much. No. You know, and so for you to come in and do that, it showed a level of maturity, showed a level of humility, um, that a lot of drummers did not have. Man, so my hat is off to you in that respect, man, because. Um, you did what a lot of drummers could not do. And not to say that I'm the biggest, greatest thing, but you did what a lot of drummers could not successfully do. And that's fill in yeah. for me. Like, for real, bro, that's not <laughs> easy. To do. And you know easy. it, right? Yeah. So my hat's off to you, bro. Man, that I'm, I, and because you my little bro, I say it to you in this way. I'm proud of you. Yeah. I'm proud of you for that means a lot man. proud of you for that that's a me that's that's a man i saw him i saw a man step up to the plate no. <laughs> especially if you don't know you really ain't that comfortable oh yeah no right? it wasn't it takes yeah. a man yeah. to be you know i'm gonna be uncomfortable but i'm gonna get it yeah you know i'm, gonna, I'm not gonna run from this challenge it takes a man to do that so yeah. my hat's off to you oh that man listen that that means everything bro cut yeah, yeah cut. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> the heck? But, bro listen man that means a lot. And I'm not even like, you know me well. Like You come to me times and be like, yo, you're too angry. Like, what's wrong with you? But it was just like, I wasn't like, people tell me now, man, we didn't even know you had teeth. You didn't smile. <laughs> but for me, man, I had, it wasn't even two individuals. I had tunnel vision and I knew I was the, I was like the undercard dude. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So like even like comparing myself to Aaron Spears, me and Aaron Spears hit at the same time. Yeah. Soon as he got Usher, months later I got married. Yeah. But I always looked up to Aaron. Yeah. Because he was just this thing. So even in certain spaces where it was like, all right, when Ricky will call, I call you like, did you know he he was like, Well, who you think vouched? <laughs> and which I knew, but in my mind it was like, yo, man, this is a seat. Like we was talking earlier, that's a seat. I'm not going to say I never wanted to feel. It's a seat I never thought I could feel. Yeah. Because the music you were playing, like I would hear you do a TV show, you would do one song that I was like, oh yeah, I could play that play song. That. Yeah. It was like, well, what about the other two hours worth of music? And that night when you told me, you was like, bro, just start listening to other music. He was like, because you got everything else. Then you took me to um, Oscars. I don't know if he was at third encore. I don't remember where his practice spot was mm. but it was just me you and him y'all start we well, was cool at first four four everything was cool <laughs> oscar was like no i got something y'all start doing these tops y'all just start switching tops i was like i wasn't gonna tell y'all <laughs> that i don't I know where the one yeah, is yeah <laughs> i was like but what was funny is after we did it oscar was like he's like man i'm proud of you young fella He was like but yeah work on your time signatures he was like, I know you was stressing. Yeah. In that moment, I was like, got it. Yeah. Because for me, I never took offense to the things y'all told me to work on. Yeah, well, it wasn't no offense given. Yeah, so it was like once I did that, I asked another yeah. question. So, like, for real, man, that that means a lot, bro. Yeah, man. Seriously, yeah. man, because I, <laughs> Wayne, you know, Wayne, Wayne Lindsay's the one I hang with on our breaks. Yeah, yeah. So he'd be like, no, oh, yo, fella, you, you got it. You, yeah, you got it. Yeah, you got it. And I'm looking at Wayne like, man, y'all fools play for Whitney. Like, everybody. <laughs> so, like, that's, you are, you literally, that validation is fuel. Oh, my God. It is the gas that makes the engine go, bro. Yeah. Because, like, you, you know, you been there. You that ain't no seat you just wanna yeah. that ain't the seat you hang out in. And that's the thing too, man. It's like you to even be able to place value on his validation. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's another side of where I feel like our generation, our young generation, has to get to placing value on something that is valuable. I'm going to place value. Absolutely. I know somebody else can know it's valuable, but I'm going to recognize the fact that you're valuable 
and what you say to me is of great value. You know what I mean? Like that's a whole that's a whole paradigm shift. That's a whole philosophy of itself. In, in and of itself is like there's value in that and I'm going to place my value in that. So as you tell me something, I value that because I place high value on you. 100%. You know what I mean? Like that's another level of honor that's like, whoa, like, you know, I don't know, man. I just think that that is so mature of you. And and I said this to you before we even started taping. Man, I got to give, I got to give props to your mom and your daddy, bro. Like that's, <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's a whole thing that's even missing in this culture, man. It's like, man, who raised y'all? Like what yeah. in the world is going on? You don't have no honor? What? Why? Yeah. <laughs> what? happen to you and so that's what my heart goes out to the generation now it's like man i understand i understood i understand what it's like just you know some of y'all may have some fathers at home you may have like a you know father and a mother raising you or whatever mm-hmm. you know every, you know our fathers and mothers and marriages and parents or whatever they ain't perfect but i understand not even having my father and understanding the, the, uh, and and running into the situation where i did not respect authority yeah. i respected power like say for instance like somebody like ricky minor right Mm-hmm. He had power because he could fire me, he could hire me. Yeah. But then my spiritual father that came into my life about a year or two years ago, he walked in authority and it was I had a problem. He had <laughs> he had authority over my whole family. Yeah. Authority that I didn't have. Mm-hmm. And that bothered me. And I wanted it so bad. Like, I need a father figure. I need a father figure. Here come a father and show up and walk in in authority. And I was bucking like, oh, no. And so I understand what this generation is right now. They don't respect authority. They don't know authority. They've never been under authority. And so for you to have that level of humility and place a high value on something that you have already deemed valuable, that don't just happen. Yeah. So that was, you know, your product of your environment, product of your parenting. So shout out. Oh, yeah. To the Hardys. Oh, listen. <laughs> my mother, Lavelle Hardy, and my father, Rexel Hardy Sr. Shout out, that's, bro. Oh, yeah. For real. And that's it, man. Listen, that's that's all I saw as a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, my grandfather, well, my great-grandmother was the pastor, founder. Then my grandfather was the pastor. Then my mom took it over. So I've always seen a certain level of respect, even when you were being disrespected sometimes. Mm. It's like... They give somebody something and that person immediately turns around and slaps them, mm. whether it's emotionally or whatever the case may be. But now somebody's pouring into you. I'm going to accept it. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. you looking at me or Wayne looking at me and saying some things, me thinking back as a kid, it's like, no, you may have this group of people that may not value what you bring. Don't concentrate on them. Concentrate on the ones who do value you know what I'm saying? What you bring. And I think that's where when you would tell me like, bro, man, you got to stop being mad. You got that's where that energy was mm-hmm. because I was I was growing in trying to figure out how to differ the two crowds. Mm. I was solely focused on the people who didn't really rock with me. Mm. It was like the people who do rock with you, the group may be smart, smaller but it's more value over here. Mm. And this is the group that's putting food on your table. You know what I'm saying? So mm. Mm. for me, just looking at certain things and I, mm. like I said, I want to tell you young guys and if you got some older dudes too. I mean, whatever, but don't be afraid. Everybody's not out to keep you where you are. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everybody's not out for that. Like people will hit me in my DMS. And that's the thing when I was coming up there, social media wasn't what was up. Yeah. MySpace came on the back end, you know what I'm saying? But we actually had to find you all or come to a concert you was playing at. Mm. Like, there's a sense of... Power in that, bro. Yeah, there's a sense of connection that the virtual world has made that people take as a bloodline. It's like, no, bro, like, just because you send me a DM and I left you on read, it don't mean I don't... I'm not going to respond. It means I can't respond today. You get what I'm saying? But... They take that as like, oh, man, they a certain way. It's like, nah, man, just give me a minute. Yeah. Whereas with me, I would look at y'all and when y'all would tell me something, it's like, okay, the value in him saying that is everything. So let me take that and build on that versus looking at it like, 
oh man, you hating. I don't even use the word hate. It's corny to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what's yeah. the, I'm not going to gain anything for like, me and you was talking a while ago. We're all human. None of us asked to be here. Yeah. So at the end of the day, what is me? What would it be like for me to not see you grow? Mm. I think that's what I now. Granted, there were some older guys that didn't want to see me level up. And that was cool. But again, they were in the group that didn't want to see me make moves. Mm. But in that, I want these guys to know like, man, ask. Yeah. But be in a place to accept it. Yeah. Because everything y'all told me wasn't what I wanted to hear, yeah. but it was what I needed to hear. Well, man, I just remember, man, I'm always reminded when I hear stories like that and, you know, all kind of Bible verses come to mind. You know, this one says, you know, that you, if you uh, honor your, your hum, sorry, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. And in due time, in his time, you know, he'll, he'll exalt you. He'll lift you up. So it's like you have to humble yourself before he exhausts you. You know, it's like, so there's a part that you play in God's exalting, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And him pushing you ahead of the line, him yeah. giving you grace and this like, whoa, man, everybody looking at you like, wow, man, how did you like, that's him exalting you, right? But there's a part you play in it and that's you humbling yourself. And I feel like, that's what we have to do as responsible human beings. We're not babies, you know what I mean? We're men now, man. We yeah. got to, there's a responsibility we have to get into the next level. We can't just show up because we bad and then expect the world to be ours because we got to give. It's like, no, what did you do to get to the next level? You didn't get yourself to the next level because you didn't give yourself the gift. Fact. So what <laughs> right. is your position? What is your part to play? Humble yourself. That's all you got to do. Yeah. That's it. And I, and I feel like that's why, it, you know, it looks like Teddy got the world. It's like, man, you know, the Lord has been really good to me. I have yeah. been really blessed. But, man, I've humbled myself, bro. Yeah. Like, I humbled myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? I humbled myself. Mm -hmm. I, I, I esteem you above myself. Yeah. I look at you. You, I put more, I place more value on you and more importance on you than I do myself. You yeah. more important to me than me. Right. <laughs> right. That's how I feel about it. Though. Yeah, absolutely. Because at the it. end of the day, I'm not taking care of me. God is. Yeah. So if I take care of the things that he's, if I'm concerned about the things he's concerned about, he's going to be concerned about me. You know what absolutely. I mean? It's like his concern is you. It's, you know, so I should be concerned about you and not worry about me. He's going to take care of me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel like we just don't understand. And these are the kind of things that we have to start teaching these gen this generation. It's like, man, you can already play. Yeah. Man, let's go have some coffee, man. Let me sit down and talk to you. What's going on in your head? Yeah. How did you grow up? Did you have a father in the house? Yeah. What, did you, what life lessons did you learn? What's your philosophy on life? Like, what do you think? Do you, do, do you, what do you think about God? What is your, what is your, what is your, what is your idea of faith? Like, yeah. what, you know, like this is stuff like, man, like what, what is your purpose on earth? Yeah. What, have you ever thought about what your purpose is while you, why you're here? Yeah. And if you're going to tell me some drums, I got to sit down and have another conversation with you. Yeah. There's something that you have to be able to understand as it pertains to even the gift that you've been given of a drummer or musician or whatever. I look at that as a vehicle. Mm-hmm. It's a part of my purpose and what I'm here to do, but it's a vehicle to do other things because I'm going to be more than a drummer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm a father. I'm a husband. Mm -hmm. I'm a son. You know, I'm all of these things as well as a drummer. Yeah. So what lessons am I learning about my life even through my drums? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just feel like we, those are concepts that our younger generation don't have. And it's going to be up to us to really be able to teach them that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like that's where we are right now. I was talking to Lil John, man, and we was just talking about this kind of stuff, man. He was like, man, I just feel like I'm in the season like where, man, I need to be teaching these guys and just pouring out and giving. When you get older, man, that's what you start feeling. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, man, I didn't hit the, I didn't reach the ceiling as a drummer. <laughs> right, maxed. I'm maxed out, bro. Yeah, on the drums. I'm maxed out. Yeah. Like after the Tonight Show, yeah. That was 10 years ago. Really? That was Jeez, 10 years Thomas. ago, bro. Oh, my son is, wow. I'm maxed out. Yeah. I'm maxed out 10 years ago. Yeah. So you know now what? I mean? what? 
Now what? Yeah. <laughs> what what does your actual character do? To further me into the next. Exactly. Because I can bring the drums with me. Oh, yeah. Or maybe not. But like, how do I? And that's where we are. That's where I am. Navigating that now. Okay, what's now? What's next? You know, and, and I got to think about now before I think about the next. And so we just really need to be having these conversations with this generation that they need to understand you going to be 48 one day. Oh, yeah. You're 28 now. You're 38 now. <laughs> you're going to be 48. Oh, yeah. You're going to be 58. You're going to be 68 if the Lord is gracious to you mm -hmm. and merciful to you. What you going to do? How you going to be thinking? Yeah. You can't be thinking the same way. You can't. <laughs> I, tell, I told somebody it's the same as some of these artists. <laughs> Whatever decade they were hot in, their mentality, the way they dress, everything stays there. <laughs> Because that's where they was coming. I'm serious. Well, it was yeah, it was yeah. like, bro, yeah. like there's more. There's a whole nother, yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's more. And like I said, I'll even take one on the chin myself when it comes to attitude. And yeah, I was subbing for you, but I was still in a certain. I knew I was blessed. Yeah. But I, so I never took any time you all called me for granted ever. I still don't. But at the same time, I knew I was still in a place of trying to prove something to the people who didn't matter. So. Me learning how to be humble came from being in positions where it's like, you're not the guy or being put in positions that I couldn't control. Mm. Like when it came to dealing with drinking and certain things of that nature, it was like, I don't have control over this right now. Mm. So I have to humble myself to figure out what's going on. Like I couldn't see because I, mean, I'm, I don't think I was arrogant, but I had arrogant ways of moving because I had tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. So this person over here didn't matter to me because we had a show next week. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, bro, that's your family. Not that I push my family. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. My, my thoughts were just all over the place. So I tell these dudes now, like even with these addictions and stuff, I'm like, bro, they're real. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It's like, they are real. So if you're dealing in a place of you're not even open enough to talk, you, or you only want to talk about drums, yeah. bro, like, and you, you're struggling with a porn addiction. You're struggling with alcohol addiction. Yeah. You're struggling with a perversion addiction. You're struggling with some, some you know, you're a straight up liar. Yeah. You're a thief. <laughs> For no reason. You're, a, you're making money on tour, killing it and stealing everything. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I was like, like, let's talk about on, that. Bro, like, come on. You, you ain't seen your 10 year old son in eight years. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, what? Right. Let's talk about that. Yeah. You sitting up here beating your girlfriend up. Yeah. Let's talk about that, man. You the greatest drummer already. That don't matter if you beating your girlfriend up. Because that's what they're going to remember. That's what they're going to remember. <laughs> and I think, one, like you said, once you take music off the table, most of their tables are blank. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing like, on the table. Nothing else on the table. And it's like, I never, and that's one thing I loved about Aaron. Yeah, he was one of the greatest. Flawed, like, he was Aaron. But we always talked about everything outside. Outside the drum. It's like, we didn't even care. Yeah. It's like, man, like, but it took me, and I'm the type of guy, like, I don't even like, talk, there are certain guys still now, all they want to do is talk about drums. And most of the time, I never answer their calls. I never, because I don't want, <laughs> to t we've been doing that forever and i just mean not talking about it forever that's what we do yeah you get what i'm saying so for me it was like to have those conversations and you'd be like all right man bro like this is great but I, dog and i've never said this on camera i remember getting the dui in la mm -hmm. i remember it like it was yesterday that was terrible that was a horrible time but this was like 2006 i remember it mm. I definitely went to jail mm. in L.A. Mm. It wasn't no Google Maps and all that. Who did Sean Hinton decide to reach out to? He called you. <laughs> Dog. Because he had to, we had rehearsal the yeah. next day. He yeah. came and got me. He was like, man, I know you might be mad at me, but I called Teddy to figure out how to. I said, wait. <laughs> you called. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do that, did you? I was like... <laughs> I was like, dog, you're an idiot. I was like, 
you didn't call Tay. He was like, yeah, man. He was like, I figured he might say something to you. So, And I called you while he was in the car. He was like, bro, man, I'm really disappointed in you. And it was like just to hear it in your voice. And it wasn't like a judgmental disappointment. Yeah. It was like, you know better. Yeah. You get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So it was like in that moment, it was like, okay. And granted, I still dealt with some drinking stuff after that. But in that moment, it let me know how much you are like a Nissan. Certain ones, like even Calvin hit me like, yo, let's get a hold of this. Yeah. Because this ain't you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's I think destroy you, yeah. Yeah, and I think some of these guys need to understand we're those guys. We are. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the guy. You can you can call me drunk. I'll be like, first of all, are you at home? Like, let's start the conversation there because if you're safe, then we can figure everything else out. Mm. But you know what I'm saying? If you like, if if I know a dude got a drinking problem, I'm not hanging out with him in no bar. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But again, like you said, I think if we can really get to this generation and let them know, like, we are y'all, and you all are gonna be us soon. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So let's figure this out now and move forward. Like it's I think it's gonna happen with things well, like this. Yeah. For with sure. conversations like now. this yeah. and just us even learning how to communicate because their their language is different. Yeah. It's real quick. I mean, for God's sakes, there's songs out there with no real words. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's they don't like they even know how to communicate. You know, so I think it, and that's one thing I even like. Even Nissan, I used to love about Nissan. Nissan, he would always talk to me on my level. Mm. He would talk to me real regular. Yeah, it's like because you know I looked up to y'all, but he was like, "Nah, man, it's cool." He's like, "Man, just live, figure yeah, it out, figure it out." I was like, "Wow." I love that about him. He was always he he <clears throat> he's very he's very trusting in your ability to figure it out. 100%. Like Ricky Minor, he was the same. He's the same way. Yeah, he's very trusting in your humanity. You'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> That's his thing. Yeah, you'll figure it out. You be like you good. And I have to, I have to sometimes make sure that I'm walking in that too. Like try, you know, stop trying to be somebody's Holy Ghost. Yeah, you know, I'm trying. Let me teach you and show you what. It, you know, yeah. like you know, and I, but my heart, I have to, you know, you know, even surrender all of that too because it's like, man, I, I've, I've. I'm a different kind of person because I've really had some very bad public failures. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I really am the guy like screaming out to the guy and don't do that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> please. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, man. I'm, I'm telling, you look it out. I'm like, like oh, you know, so I'm like, so I have to get under control. It's like, okay, man, maybe they need to do all that. Yeah. So that they can learn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. But I am now. Like, oh, no, man. You're going to die. Yeah. you like, don't. You're going to lose everything. Take my word you know for it. You know what I mean? So I get it, man. But no, I appreciate that about you, man. Because again, it goes so much further than drums. Yeah. And I think when people are able to lock in with somebody to where it's not a threat, like, yeah. You call me to fill in tonight. If you, and yeah. I'll be right yeah. there. But it's not even about that. It's just about, yo. This person trusts you enough, one, like you said, to figure it out. Yeah. Because certain guys, certain whatever the case may be, they never put that type of trust in you. Yeah. Which means they, which is cool, but it lets you know to really value the ones that do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's really a thing. So, like I said, even with you calling me, it's like, man, I'm really disappointed. Knowing how much I looked up to you, of course, I should have stopped that day. Mm. But when you're dealing with something who's telling you to stop or whatever that is, it don't matter in that moment. So like you just said, it took me to hit some walls yeah, and be like, to it. you yeah. know what, Teddy, 13 years ago, you was, <laughs> right. I have a longer way. It's yeah. like, yeah, you were right. But I mean, that's, I think that's what these younger dudes need to know. Like, don't be afraid. And to have somebody that actually tells you that they're disappointed in you. Yeah. To even care enough to say, to even let you know that they were rooting for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you let them down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that even goes a long way. Absolutely. Somebody does. that you love and respect to say, you disappointed me? So actually, you you had some kind of expectation of me? You saw me? You thought I was important? You thought you you paid attention to me? You value, you have love for me? You're concerned about me? You, you thinking about me? Yep. That says all that yeah. to somebody who's not thought of. Those feels facts. that they're not 
thought of or seen. You yeah. Know? Powerful. No, those are true facts. Because at the end of the day, like I said, that type of love or even admiration you get from people you really care about and you know they really rock with you outside of what you're yeah. known for, that's what it took me a minute, I guess, somewhat to gain an appreciation for. Yeah. I never disrespect, but it was like, man, like this is really what matters. That's why I'm home now. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, if I'm being honest, that's yeah. why I'm not on the road how I used to be. Yeah. It was just like it was a sense of perspective, like, okay, let me figure this out. And like you said, just like taking away when you want to learn a different type of playing yourself, you take yourself out of that. I had to take myself out the industry. Yeah. Well, God took me yeah. out. Yeah. Like it was, he took he was like, You got there's no tour you need to do right now that's more important yeah. than what I need you home yeah. for. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, that I mean, it was hard. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it was worth it. Yeah. And that's when real life showed up. And again, even for me, like this season, I've definitely grown closer with God. You yeah. know, I'm not even a spiritual dude. I mean, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. But I've grown closer with God. Like, of course, my family's gotten closer. And then I'm just, I'm being more intentional on being approachable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you get what I'm saying? And this, but this is where I needed to be. To because I'm not moving. I mean, I'm doing a lot, yeah. but I'm not, you know what I'm saying, yeah. moving on somebody else's time. It's like, okay, I could take time out of here to mentor this person or talk to this. And I had to get here to really lock that in. It's a humbling situation. Yeah. Very. This is humbling. Yeah. Where you are now is humbling. Yeah. Because <laughs> you've been a straight up icon, celebrity, touring giant. 20 years you know what I mean? <laughs> right you know what i mean yeah. so it's like so this is a step of humility a big step yeah and this is where like i said this is where the exaltation comes from you're gonna start seeing a lot of things in your life you just there's gonna be like whoa how the heck did this happen you know yeah. what i mean because of that humility man you was like man i'm not it's like aaron aaron Eek. literally <laughs> he was so took humble. a job at a church yep so he could be at home with his family yeah he took a job at a church bro this Aaron Spears oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, know, hey, like, you have churches that'll tour to follow Aaron Spears what yeah alright no joke <laughs> so humble yeah. humble he got the ultimate exaltation yeah oh yeah <laughs> For real. He with the Lord right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we and, know and that's left, where he is. And left immortalized. Dude. Didn't even want it. Yeah. Had a name above all. Sit, dude. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. It's so. He literally, like, I, I literally wished I could have started living how he lived mentally as a kid. Bro, when I met Aaron over 20 years ago, yeah. he was already mature in his character. He was not an average church drummer. Yep. He was already mature in his character. <laughs> Aaron didn't do any growing in his character. Bro, he, he was, was the, there he already. He was already there. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, bro, <laughs> like, Humility goes a long way, man. It does. It goes a long way. And like, again, and this it, and this is not harping on younger drummers. This is just to musicians. Whatever you do in life, you don't even have to do music. But just when you humble yourself, life takes a whole nother turn. You don't even see things the same. Yeah. Because like you said, we've always been giving guys like, how, you know, we put people on, we've helped. But at the end of the day, like being in the space where you could be like, you know what? It's absolutely not about me on no level. Mm. Like I could be at my lowest, but if my homie need it, let's figure it out because I know you're pulling on me for a reason. Yeah. And like you said, God is taking care of me, yeah. so I'm going to be cool. Yeah. But again, you hit those moments where if I wasn't as locked in to practicing this humility as I am, it could get me. Yeah. It'll take my mind somewhere else. Amen. I'm grateful for everything God does and all the lessons that he wants us to learn. He puts us in a position to learn them. Yeah. We we didn't choose it. He chose it for us. And it's better 
for us because he loved us so much that he would give us an opportunity to grow, opportunity for us to humble ourselves so we could grow. So I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful for where I am right now. I'm grateful for where you are right now um, because I see the maturity. I see the maturity. I see the maturity. I see the lessons. I see the lessons you've learned yeah. <laughs> because of where you are. It's yeah. amazing. No, nah, that means everything, bro. Like, thank, for real, for real, like I told you, man, I have to thank you for being you because you were a dude that took a route. Like I said, I'm not just talking about music, but you took a route most were scared of. Mm. Almost all. <clears throat> it's like you always brought something that wasn't the norm. And it was like, okay, well, now that's the norm. You know what I'm saying? It was just certain things you did, and it was like, wow, okay. If I can aspire to be like that, I know I'm doing something right. Mm. And you just always had, like, you literally always, you were like the shepherd almost in some cases. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It was like, whatever he's doing, that's what we need to do. Mm. So it's like, for me, man, I don't ever want you. Even when it got to the social media thing, dog, I wasn't playing with you. I was like, Teddy, what are we doing? Like, because... There was a generation who looked at a ceiling and was like, well, you know, this ceiling has a roof. <laughs> you you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like some people only saw it's like, so now like you in the space, even where you are now, like showing people Teddy, mm. you get what I'm saying? Mm. Showing them Teddy is different than just like, okay. Oh yeah. That's Teddy playing drunk. Like, nah, yeah. you, you really brought something to this world that was needed. And me personally, I appreciate you and I don't ever take you, our brotherhood, any of this for granted. Like even this man, like this is, this is big for me. You know what I'm saying? And to have you here is everything, bro. Thank you, man. For real. Like I said, just being who you are showing up when you always need it for whoever needs you. Mm. So you being here on this, like I said, this is like the relaunch of this. So to have you as the, it's, we good. We're going to be exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> We're going up. we going up. <laughs> no, I love you, bro. Love For real. You, man. You are really Yeah. Peace. Peace. Young town.